dear Stefan, hello, you're from Ukraine, how are you? Hi, uh, I'm very well, thank you. Thank you for having me in the interview. First of all, uh, t could you tell us a little bit about yourself for our Russian-speaking area viewers? Uh, what is your job uh, at, Le at Laika? What tasks do you face? Yeah, so um, uh, my position is called uh, Global Director of the product division photo. That means that we, um, my team and I are looking from a product idea, transforming it into a concept, uh, try to make it a viable business model so that in the end, uh, the camera, uh, the Leica camera company can earn money on it. And then uh, accompany the product uh, during development, uh, and through the whole life cycle till the phase out of the product. So it's a very holistic approach to say, okay, um, there is an idea, let's yeah, try to make it and then uh, follow it through uh, the entire life of the product. So, um, uh, so we, we're building the roadmaps of the company uh, meaning that uh, we, we create the product portfolio and uh, yeah, follow the market trends, um, look what our competitors do. So a uh, lot of work, uh, all with the goal yeah, to make Leica grow and uh, make the customers happy, of course. Uh, could you tell us how the concept of the Digital M series was formed? Yeah, that that uh, that's that's a quite a uh, a good question because um, when digital photography came up, uh, I would say end of the '90s, beginning of the 2000s, uh, Leica was um, trying to yeah to find a way into the digital photography, and we had a uh, we had one then one very early approach, the Leica S1 which was a scanner camera back in 96. Um, a very funny camera because it took three minutes for one uh, picture, but it um, uh, in today's respective, it's 75 megapixel, which was uh, 25 years ago, a lot. Um, but this was commercially not a big success. So um, we tried and developed several concepts um, uh, how to create a digital system camera within Leica. Um, but only when uh, the technology was available so that you could design a sensor, um, an imaging sensor tailor-made for a Leica M. Um, meaning that uh, we wanted to uh, keep the lenses of the customers uh, valuable, meaning if you want to sell a digital M to uh, an existing M cu customer, he definitely wants to use the lenses he already have. And uh, this required a specially tailor-made sensor. And we succeeded uh, in 2006 with the M8, uh, which accepted very steep incident angle of light uh, falling onto the sensor which was in the early days of digital photography, not always um, the case. But uh, uh, this special technology uh, paved the way for the digital M. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So it was a kind of breakthrough, uh, you could say. <laughs> Stefan, in your opinion, how does Lakers company manage releasing new models to keep uh, literally all old models in trend and even films ones. This is uh, an absolutely phenomenon in the photography industry. Uh, yeah, it's quite, it's quite, yeah, it's quite uncommon, you're right. Uh, I would say one of the secrets is uh, to keep backwards compatibility. Um, as I just explained, we designed a camera to accept older lenses. So, uh, and this principle uh, makes that the products never lose completely their value. Uh, and people are very happy to be able to 
use a 1950s M lens on a today's uh, digital M yeah. and love the look and so on. Uh, but uh, this is a rule inside the company to whenever it's possible to keep the compatibility of the system uh, back and forward. So um, that makes also then uh, the analog cameras uh, still being uh, um, yeah, very popular, uh, rising even with analog photography. Yeah. So um, uh, I would say, and of course the the long life of the product uh, uh, because of the quality is also a, uh, a, a driver for this, I would say. You know, for example, today, if you have uh, M3, you're a very great guy, <laughs> yes. <laughs> but yeah. it's a yeah, very so old camera, yes. Very, very yeah, it's, it's quite old, but uh, uh, the, the funny thing is that many are, with the current MA and MP, many parts are still identical to the M3. Yeah. So it's a camera concept. Uh, being uh, now um, 60, uh, how are we? Uh, 65 years. Mm -hmm. 65 years. in the market, or 67 already? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. and so, M M3 is still, I think, the one of the best cameras. I I have yes. uh, two years ago. I uh, I buy it, and uh, I never uh, was so happy. <laughs> <laughs> when I shoot first time at the M3 because it's it's awesome. The viewfinder is 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 amazing. <laughs> really nice. Yeah, yeah. So um, yeah, and uh, I think that's the the heritage and the quality and the fact that you can still use a product which is more than sixty years old. Um, that that speaks for yeah. That that is the secret. I would say. In, uh, tell me, please, in what direction is uh, the M series heading today? It seems that the M10 is already perfection. Still, where does Leica plan to move next in M series? Yeah, of course, I cannot reveal uh, the secrets for a future M camera. I hope you can understand that. Yeah. Um, so um, what, what we're doing is we constantly monitor the feedback of the users. Mm -hmm. And of course, uh, the users uh, have a list of wishes what they want to see improved um, in a next model. And this goes into the product concept then uh, that we, we say, okay, we listen to the customer. Um, uh, we also have a technical progress uh, from the um, from the development of new sensors, battery technology, um, microelectronics in general, so that um, that all is melded into a new product. And um, of course, the steps uh, from an M8 to an M9, which was a step into full frame and then uh, into CMOS technology, I would say the steps or the, the, the levels of innovation, they become a bit smaller uh, nowadays because yeah. it's quite mature. Uh, can I ask uh, one question about the, I know a lot of people who said that um, M8, M9 with a CCD uh, sensor was one of the be best colors, best sensors, uh, will be maybe something, uh, maybe new CCD uh, sensor or something like this. It's, it's really awesome. <laughs> okay. Uh, um, uh, we also heard this quite a number of times uh, that people like uh, the colors of the M9 especially very much. And this took us also to the part uh, or to the fact that the M10, when it came out, uh, we, we tuned the colors uh, intentionally to look very similar to the M9. So. Uh, I would say today, if you look at a picture and you don't know uh, with uh, with what camera it is taken, um, it's it's very it's a very dangerous game to say, oh, this is made with the M9 or this is made with the M10. So um, and to CCD, 
uh, this is a is a technology where is no innovation, mm. uh, and uh, so CMOS is the current state of the art technology. So it's very unlikely that we uh, gonna see a new CCD based uh, M camera mm -hmm. because Thank it's kind of a dead technology. Mm -hmm. I understand. Thank you. Mm. You're welcome. <laughs> Stefan, today the photography industry is moving towards camera automation, increasing megapixels, focus point, uh, etc. Does Leica lend itself to this trend? After all, it always had its own way. Yeah, it's um, uh, this is uh, it's a it's a quite interesting question, and it's the answer is pretty complicated. Okay. Um, of course, Leica has to be a bit different from what is offered from Japan. Uh, on the other hand, we cannot completely neglect uh, overall technology trends. And it also depends on the, um, on the market segment. Uh, for example, if you take uh, the Leica SL system, it is pretty much into competition with Sony, Nikon, Canon, and so on. So Leica needs to play this game uh, in this product segment. Mm -hmm. uh, on the other hand, um, product segments where uh, Leica is more or less alone on the market, uh, like the M or the Q, we can do things a bit differently. Um, but it's never a good idea to completely ignore technology trends uh, in the market. But we always, on the other hand, try to go our own way and to be a bit different. Yeah, yeah. Leica, Leica is like Harley Davidson in the motorcycles. Yeah, there are a lot of, lot of comparisons between Leica. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. It's all classic, all, all old models is still exist. And, uh, and the customers want the classic. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Uh, Stefan, you know, today is the film is experiencing a second rebirth, although not uh, everyone agrees, uh, not, yes, but Leica is the only modern film camera manufacturer. Do you plan to continue the production of MA and MP, or maybe there will be something new? In film. Yeah, again, I cannot talk about future innovations, mm -hmm. uh, but <laughs> of course we'll continue the production of the MA and MP. Uh, also this digital uh, or this analog trend um, uh, is also um, driving sales of the and demand of our uh, new, new models. Uh, so the new cameras, MA and MP, uh, so in production is running at full steam uh, and we even have a waiting list um, if you want to buy a new uh, analog Leica. Um, uh, so it's an interesting movement that especially young people enjoy shooting film. Um, and this makes me very confident that uh, it will last, uh, it will last for a while. Mm -hmm. Great. Yeah, yeah. The, uh, we are also uh, shooting on the film a lot, and uh, really, the last five years, I think, it's really the renaissance of the film. Uh, a lot of people, the young people, want to. Uh, it they for them, it's something new. <laughs> if for right. us, uh, it, it's something old, and uh, but but for them, they they don't want already to shoot on digital this is they they know what is it but but the film is is something new and uh, thanks <laughs> thanks god that leica still uh, manufacture the the new cameras because uh, all the the nikon the Ca the canon is already uh, not manufactured the their yeah, uh, yeah. But I, I have old R6, like R6, and I love it. Yeah. <laughs> Alex have a three, yes, M3, from M3, MC, M, uh, M6, yeah, this is a great camera. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's all, uh, I also have plenty of this, uh, this guys, yeah. M6, M5, M3, uh, <laughs> R cameras, 
like her flexes, everything. Yeah, too much. <laughs> Do you photograph, Stefan? Are you shooting? Yes, I, I, take, I take photographs, um, not as much as I used to, uh, to do. <laughs> I have a, a, a bit uh, yeah, less time than before, but uh, it's still uh, enjoyment uh, uh, also. And of course, um, testing a new model is always a great uh, privilege, yes, as well. Okay, Stefan, and uh, last question. Uh, recently, the photography industry has been uh, plagued by mobile photography. Has this influenced Leica and uh, the change in camera concept in the present and maybe in the future? Mm. Yeah, maybe it's time to, uh, to, yeah, to, to shed a different light uh, onto that because uh, everybody says digital photography has been uh, decreasing uh, 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 because of the smartphones. It's true and it's not true um, because serious photography, uh, if you look at the world demand and the, and the market size, was always between five and eight million units per year already in analog times before digital photography even existed. And this is exactly where the market size is nowadays and it's quite stable. So what we have seen is a incredible raise of uh, digital compact cameras, yeah, uh, becoming, uh, becoming super popular. Uh, and those have been replaced by smartphones, but I'm convinced if you want to consciously take photographs, uh, people will do that uh, also in the future with a camera and not with a smartphone. So um, uh, I'm, I'm not scared about the future of photography because um, yeah, if I look at people like you, um, uh, you, you, you certainly have a smartphone and you, certainly take pictures with it, but uh, it's not the main instrument to take pictures. So uh, that, that is uh, for, for this part. Of course, we explore uh, possibilities uh, in the smartphone market. Um, you may have seen the first Lights Phone one, which we are launching in Japan yeah. or have launched in Japan. Um, it's, yeah, it's a picture taking device. Uh, and um, we are convinced we can add some like, like a flavor there. Um, and um, it's a dual, dual route. 